In 2019, while I was growing Lemlist at a 30% month over month growth rate, I decided to start a side project called Lempot. Within 18 months, I grew this side project to $600,000 in annual recurring revenue, and then I sold it. To do so, I worked with an M&A firm, <laughs> To do so, I worked with a merger and acquisition firm, but there are also other ways to do it. If you want to know how, watch the video I made about it. So how exactly does that work when you sell a SaaS with a merger and acquisition firm? Well, you have five steps. Essentially, the first step is valuing your business. You want to know how much your business is worth. The second step is essentially going live and announcing that your business is up for sale. Third part is all about meeting buyers. Fourth step is closing the deal. But once the deal is closed, you still have a final step, which is going through the due diligence and then the transition. Let's start with valuing your business. There's actually a rule of thumb that says that profitable SaaS businesses are valued anywhere between three times and 10 times their annual recurring revenue. But the reality is that a SaaS value depends on many, many factors. I won't go into too much detail about this because I already made a video about it and you can watch it to get even more info. So to figure out the actual value of your SaaS, you need to give the broker a lot of info about your SaaS which makes this part the most demanding for both founders and brokers. When I sold my company with FE International, I had to provide details about the business, market, competitive advantage, the potential growth opportunities, etc, etc. I also gave them access to Profitwell and Stripe so they could see the metrics in real time. And then I also made a few calls with them to answer a lot of questions regarding the business. Based on that, they came up with a value we both agreed on. And that's why we decided to go with the next step, announcing that the business was up for sale. This step is divided into two parts. First, the brokers will send their prospectus to their top buyers. The best thing when working with a merger and acquisition firm or what we call brokers is that they already have a list of potential buyers. They usually create that list over years of experience from either investors, private equity firms, sometimes it's just individuals with a lot of money who wants to acquire SaaS businesses. And therefore, for you, you have a middleman handling the entire negotiation. Negotiation. So when they decide to reach out to their top buyers, they usually pick the one they think will fit most with your business and will bring you the most cash. And then they will share it with their entire network. Their goal is to find potential buyers for your company that you'll be able to meet in the next phase. Usually they want to have several interested buyers. That way the bid can go up and up and therefore you'll get the more money. Typically the merger and acquisition firms also take a percentage on the sale. Therefore it incentivizes them to to also have the highest price possible for your business. But before you get to this, you need to answer a very important question. Do you want to stay in the company or do you want to leave the business as soon as possible when selling? Both options are doable, but it doesn't mean the same thing for the buyer. Here's why. In most cases, buyers prefer that the founder stays in the business for a couple of years, but it will depend on the size of the company, of course, because in their mind, it's less risky. But it's also possible to leave the company right away. And that's what I did when selling Lampard. Which brings me to the last part, closing the deal. Most people think that once the deal is agreed on, the business is sold and they receive their money. And that's it. In reality, that's not what happens. You have a lot of different ways to structure a deal. For merger and acquisitions, the most known deal structure is a mix of cash and earnouts. Essentially, both parties will reduce the risk they're taking. So let me explain. When selling, the founders will take some cash upfront and get earnouts. Basically, more money based on either time, meaning that every year the founder stays in the business, they will get earn out and more money. It can also be revenue for a few years. For example, as a founder, you can take a percentage of the SaaS revenue. And finally, it's milestone. At every milestone, the SaaS will cross, usually based on the annual recurring revenue, the founder will get an earn out. In reality, you can be extremely flexible and very creative in how you're creating deals. Earn out based on milestone can also be milestone based on product feature, product development, specific clients that are signed. It can also be based on your churn rate, on your LTV increase, and so on and so forth. The idea is to always make sure that incentives are aligned. So why exactly does it mitigate the risk? Well, for the buyer, the bigger the earnout is, the less risk they are taking, because it means that the amount of cash upfront is way smaller. And for the founder, if they think their business can keep growing, they can still benefit from its growth for a few years money-wise. Plus, the advantage of this structure is that all of the incentives are aligned. You help the new owner grow the company you created for a few years, 
dollars and in the meanwhile you get a lot more money along the way in my case i did a mix of upfront cash and earnouts because i believed that my company could keep growing and i wanted to benefit from it and that's the structure i used again when i acquired two SaaS businesses taplio and tweet hunter a few years later now let's get to the last step the due diligence and transition and that's the most tricky part since you're often dealing with huge amount of money and important assets so here's the exact process i followed first we signed a loi or letter of intent this is a non-binding document that expresses the desire of both parties to do business together essentially non-binding means that you have no legal obligation to pursue the deal but this also means that the buyers can look at your metrics and say that they won't buy your company anymore and to be honest a lot of us based companies are known to send the loi just to get the key financials on some companies without ever buying the second step is the due diligence a due diligence is an audit the buyer will do to check whether or not the info you gave them about the business was accurate in other words they've checked the data the code the asset the financials etc etc the third part is all about the official contract the apa which stands for asset purchase agreement this is in the case where you want to sell your assets let me explain why this is, in my opinion, the best type of contract. Essentially, the APA allows a buyer to buy the assets of your company and they don't even have to buy everything and the whole company itself. Plus, most of the time, international companies have different legal structures, tax systems, legislation, which can become a big pain when trying to sell a company, which means the APA contract is overall super advantageous for international companies because the process will go much smoother. And finally, the first part, which is the most interesting one, is the payment. The payment will go through a third party. This means that the money is locked until you've sent all the assets. That's what we call the escrow. Overall, the process of selling a company can take a few months to a year, and it will take you a lot of time and energy as a founder, especially if you do it for the first time. That's why it's super important that you've defined what you want and what you expect out of the sales. In over 75 of cases, deals fail after the LOI is signed because the founders hadn't defined exactly what they were expecting. If you want more tips on how to grow SaaS businesses, feel free to check out my channel as I'm creating a lot of video on my journey growing five SaaS products. See you soon. Peace, love and profit.